All right, we're, we at this point only know one way to solve an equation that has an x squared in it. We've learned the zero product property where we would factor it down. And after it's factored, we set either part equal to zero, and then we could find what the x's are. Now we're going to begin working on other ways to solve it. Um, and we're going to build up. This is the easiest section. The next one gets a little more interesting. but So this is pretty obvious. We're going to do, um, it's called the square root property. And basically all it means is if I want to solve x squared and that's the only thing in, in the problem, it's isolated, I can just take the square root of both sides. So if I square root the left, I get x. If I square root the right, I get plus or minus 13. So I had a discussion in an earlier video about sometimes they want just the principal root where they are just saying you want the positive value. Not here. When we're solving these and we're taking the square root, we want the positive and the negative value. So there are two solutions, 13 and negative 13. And that's all there is. I, I don't know how much more complicated we get in this one. The next one gets a little better, but so if I'm square rooting the bo both sides, I'd now have x equals 81. So x is now plus or minus 9. Same again. So I'm square rooting both sides. Yeah, so the opposite of y squared is y. So plus or minus 11. OK, now this one, we have just a couple extra steps. We want to isolate the x squared. We've seen this before when we were working with square roots. The, the difficult part of the equation needs to be isolated. And so I want to get x squared by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add 48. I didn't really show anything there. I'm going to add 48 to both sides. OK, now I've got x squared equals 48. OK, let's square root both of those. We've got x is the square root of 48. Now it's actually the plus or minus. Now they went ahead and broke down 48, which you should do. And they came up with this. Now, so they're just saying here it's plus or minus 4 square root of 3, and then they're turning that into the actual answers 4 square root of 3 and negative 4 square root of 3. Okay, we're going to isolate that x squared. Now, we're going to take the square root of both sides, but that's the plus and the minus. Now, we've been breaking down square roots for quite some time. So you can do that the long way if you need, but this is going to be this. Now I would leave it at that, and that would be fine with me, but if you want to do it as 2, that's okay as well. Where we're going with this, this notation is pretty typical, but that's fine too. So just isolating the y squared. So square root of both sides. So if you break that down, you'll get that. Okay, now once again we need to isolate the the difficult part, the square here. So if we're trying to isolate that, we would divide both sides by 5. That's all we have to do. So now it's turned into a problem that we've been doing. We would square root both sides. So we're dividing both sides by 2. square root both sides, we get plus or minus the square root of 49, which is plus or minus 7. Okay, dividing both sides by 3. Now, square rooting both sides. <coughs> okay. Same thing here, but here's where they're getting at. If I try to get this isolated, send the 24 to the other side, it's a negative 24. So if I try to square root this, I have the square root of a negative number. Now, <clears throat> I think we're going to mention uh, a way to deal with this, but at this point, we don't have a, an answer. So there's something called imaginary numbers, which is a mathematician's way of dealing with this. But for now, there's no solution say okay that can't happen. Okay same here. We're going to wind up with, oops, I shouldn't do it that fast. So C would be 
Ugh, plus or minus the square root of negative 12 can't be done. So again, I, I think the complex numbers are coming in this chapter. I think we'll just mention that briefly, I believe. Maybe it's not in this book. The, um, but so until we get to that point, we can't handle that. Okay, same thing, but now we are, uh, have two steps. If this was 3x plus 5 equals 15, we would subtract away the 5 and then divide by the 3. Well, it's the same idea here. We're going to get rid of the 5 first so we can isolate the u squared. So that's what they've done here. Now, to get rid of a fraction, don't let this stress you out. To get rid of a fraction, it's just a number. You would divide it away. So if I divide 12 by two-thirds. Do you remember this is keep change flip? It's like multiplying by three halves. There's a couple ways you can think of that. A lot of people just see immediately that you could just multiply both sides by three over two. It's the same thing. So, oh, I'm sorry, should have been here. Multiply both sides by three over two. Now you'd get u squared as 18 when you do that. Square root of both sides. Now they simplified it down and they get this, because you could pull a 9, you had a perfect square inside of there. Okay, we got a couple steps. We're going to send the 4 to the other side and we get 20. Now, you can divide by 1 half, it's keep change flip, but the other way is to just think of it as I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1. So we've got x squared is 40. Now we square root both sides. Um, so you can break this down if you want to see it, but that's what you'll get. All right, send three over. Now we're going to multiply both sides by four thirds. Okay, so that's like it's over one. These can reduce down and get a seven. So that's going to give me y squared equals 28. Okay, once again, you can pull a 4 out of here, or there's a perfect square of a 4 in there. Okay, more of the same. Let's see if they're doing anything special. The only thing here is that they're going to have square roots involved. So look what we've got it down to. So we sent the 4 over, divided by 2. Now I've got a fraction. So if I'm going to square that, do you remember how we've looked at this? I can turn that into two individual square roots. Okay, then they rationalize the denominator. So we'll work one here, and I'll talk you all the way through it. But you know all the skills that are required. But So first I'm going to send... 2 to the other side by adding 2, I'd get 36. Now divide by 5. Okay, so square root this now, and we're going to get r is plus or minus the square root of 36 over 5. All right, so we got a, this isn't hard, but we got a lot of little steps to do here. I, our trick was we could break this into the individual roots if that's convenient for us, and I did. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve the top. That's 6. But we have this square root of 5 on the bottom. Well, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we are going to rationalize the denominator. Remember, we had a whole section on that trick. So we get 6 square root of 5 over 5, plus or minus. So that is your answer. Okay, you can always pause it if you want to try it yourself. I'm going to do another one of these for you. Okay, I isolated the t squared. Now we're going to square root both sides. Okay, I'm going to use our trick to split that into two individual roots. And I'm going to go ahead and do the top because I know that square root. Got one more step. I'm going to rationalize the denominator. Uh, 
Okay, that's the easy one. It's uh, going to get a little harder as we move forward with how to solve these, but that's the basic one. So hopefully that makes sense. Just isolate the x squared because there are no other x's in the problem. We can just isolate it, take the square root of both sides.